Deuteronomy 7, 9 Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. Good day, everyone. I'm just here... Um, looking over this material for the Think Orange tonight. Um, I might have to lead the larger group, which is something I haven't done yet. And I <clears throat> wasn't prepared to do. So I'm trying to make sure I can do that. Um, so that's what I'm doing now, and we'll be doing that later. I was supposed to have dinner at the house, because my mom got home from work early, and so she made meatloaf, one of my favorite part meals. <laughs> Half the time she makes it with some good fried potatoes the other half she makes quick and easy to make potato wedges <clears throat> which aren't my cup of tea <laughs> so um, I gotta do this until it's time to go over and eat um, catch you later whoops now that's a brain fart I apparently left my window open all night and it rained today for just a little while and so now Everything right along the side of my car is wet. <laughs> It'll dry. It already dried some already because it was in the sun just enough. But, um, but yeah, my bad. <laughs> All right, I'm heading off to get there. Um, got my finger, and there, of course, there's a bug in here. Of course there would be. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I was like, what happened to my window? So what was that? It was so yesterday. It was Tuesday. Tuesday night. Yeah. Okay. So when I got back from the drive with Heather, that's what it was. I asked her a question as I got out because she was getting out, and I must have forgot to roll the window back up. Oh well. Not the end of the world. My car has seen worse. I'll let my for so this bug can come out. Catch you guys later. Got none. Thinking orange, and now going over to the house to watch Survivor. Fill you guys in a little later on what actually happened. Alright, <clears throat> this day is over. Um, okay, so we had Think Orange and um It was fun. Now the, the guy who usually does the large group couldn't make it. He had an emergency at work. So I had to step up and do the large group time. Um, we also were short our craft person. So <clears throat> I didn't lead it per se. But um, but we were definitely in charge. Our, the group leaders were definitely in charge of making sure the craft worked smoothly as well. And then we had our small group time. It was good. They got to the verse. They got to the information we did. We talked about um, the story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz, and and the theme is kindness. And so we talked about the barley and and Boaz being kind, leaving the barley for Ruth to gather for her and Naomi. Ruth being kind by staying with Naomi and helping her gather the food they needed. Naomi being kind to. Ruth and Orpa, the other daughter-in-law, and telling them to stay in their land because it would be better for them, and um, things like that. And so he went through all the material, everything, and then he went to game time outside, and I, I created a game on the spot off the top of my head. We used the Iwana Circle. Um, I got four of the, the four pins that I have out there. I have two orange ones, a red one, and a yellow one. Because it's think orange, red and yellow orange. So I put them all out there and I said those that was barley. And so they were gonna run around, but they were gonna be the workers, and I was Boaz, so I was gonna make the decisions. Um, so they're just gonna run around the circle one time, go in, and they can choose. Either they pick up a pin and they keep it with them, or they knock a pin over to leave the barley for someone else. Um <clears throat> And they could choose. And they go one time, the next person goes. One time, the next person goes. Um, so they wound up going around and around. They all got knocked down. Then someone started taking one. They got tired of it, so they put it back. 
Not a lot of interchanging and stuff. I said they're just gonna keep running one after the other, after the other. And literally, we just did it one time. The game ran through one time. It took the entire game time that we had. And it worked really well, I think. Um, but I was still making it up as we went. I created the beginning part of the game. I said, I told them I didn't know what the criteria was, but they had to remember the story, and I was gonna be Boaz making a decision for the thing, for the people. And so what happened was they go through, someone wound up picking up one, and I said you could pick one up, even if you have one already, you can pick a second one up, you can pick a third one up, you can pick a fourth one up if you want to, if you can carry them. And this one kid had three of them and he was like waddling around the circle. Um, so he got tired of carrying them, so he put one back, and then someone else put one back, and wound up with more, and then, but one of the kids would always knock it over, never pick one up. So I thought for sure, once I figured out how I was going to play the ending, which was whenever there was none left in the middle, the next person to go in would be Ruth, and the workers didn't do what Boaz said, and so the winner would be the Ruth in the game. <laughs> and so I thought for sure the one kid was going to get it, but then the last time he went, he decided he was going to pick one up instead of knock it over or leave it laying for the um, for the gleaning. And um, and so the next kid went through. He decided he was going to hold on to all three of his, which then left the last kid to not have one available. So he became Ruth, and there were only three kids in my group, by the way. Um, <laughs> he became the Ruth, and the winner, I raised his hand and everything. And like the other two, you guys were the workers, but you didn't leave the, the, I said, you didn't leave the barley like Boaz wanted. And so I don't know if they got the they got the illustration I don't know if they got the reason why I went with the winner and the non winners but um, like I said it wasn't perfect but it, I was impressed that I came up with it the way I did just off the top of my head and it just flowed really well um, Survivor was good um, yeah I thought what happened was inevitable and it was going to happen um, if not then then pretty soon um, a mistake was made last time, last episode, that um, made it so this one played out. It didn't surprise me the way it played out. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. What else? Uh, been, I subscribed to CinemaSins and the Screen Junkies Honest Trailers on YouTube. Those two channels, Screen, Screen Junkies and CinemaSins. And Cinema Sense isn't everything wrong with a certain movie in so many minutes or less. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Screen Junkies is Honest Trailers. And so they both did Cinderella this week because Cinderella is coming out this weekend. <clears throat> and, um,. Basically, pretty good <laughs> the way they made fun of these little things. Like, of course, the stepmother was evil. Just look at her face. She was always scowling, things like that. Um, the Honest Trailers put a few songs in there, making fun of the songs that are already in the movie. Like, a dream is a wish your heart makes. And they said the song's about deception. Um, and all these things. <laughs> Unrealistic goals to set if you have that mindset type of thing. And not, it's not wrong, but it's not necessarily right. It's just kind of funny that they brought it to light. The next one was um, when the mice were making the dress and helping Cinderella. Um, the line, the first line of the song, as they put it, was, um, "We are mice, the smartest people. We will kill you in your sleeple." Um, <laughs> uh, it rhymed, of course, and it it totally wasn't what the song was about, but it was funny because it was so ridiculous and wrong but <clears throat> and then they also made fun of the bippity boppity boo and anything anything rhymes if you make up the words basically it was the idea behind that one and so that was fun and we showed it to our mom showed those both those videos to our mom tonight because she's a big cinderella fan too <clears throat> so that's the extent of my day so i'm gonna go watch the 100 the season finale of the 100 I was not happy with the way the last episode ended, and I thought that was a season finale last week. I guess I do remember now that I think about it, it was a two-part season finale. And it was definitely a cliffhanger the way they ended it. But I thought things were going to wrap up nicely, and then they didn't. And I was like, no, don't do that. And then they said, next time. And I'm like, 
thank goodness there's at least a next time. And hopefully they don't... I mean, they could probably... If they do anything like the first season, they will give a cliffhanger. But hopefully it'll be like a new... Something new happens, out of the blue. What does this mean type of thing? Not... Um, going the other direction with it and uh, leave, us, leave this thing that they've been building all season still unfinished. So hopefully they don't go that route. So, but that's it for the vlog. For Donnie, Abe, George, and me, good night everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.